Hello everyone, my name is Sayed and today we are going to start IGCSE ICT Information and Communication Technology. This is the lesson one and with this lesson we'll discuss different types of digital devices and different features of those digital devices and how they work. Let's begin the class. The first question that comes to our mind is what are digital devices? Digital devices are pieces of hardware that use computer or microcontrollers. The purpose of digital devices is to enhance our everyday life. For example, you can think of the laptop, phones, printers, etc. These devices work together to give us things we need anywhere or anytime. Now let's talk about the different types of digital devices. The first digital device that we're going to discuss is called computers. Before we discuss the computer, let's talk about what are the microprocessor. Because microprocessor is the main component of every computer system. A microprocessor is a device that controls what a computer does. It takes data as input, does something with it, and provides the output. Basically, it takes the input, processes it, and then give us the output using the output devices. We will discuss input and output devices later in the... Now the first type of computer is called the mainframe computer. A mainframe computer is a large powerful computer. A mainframe computer can do a lot of complicated jobs quickly. Since it's very powerful, a lot of people can use it at the same time. That's all about the mainframe computers. Let's talk about the next one which is the desktop computers. The desktop have more space for components than laptop, user can upgrade desktop or add additional components such as hard disk, RAM, etc. And a desktop computer usually need to have peripheral devices connected to it. The peripheral devices include a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, etc. Next one is called the laptop. Laptops include a keyboard, a screen, a trackpad, a rechargeable battery. All those things are included inside the laptops. Laptops are example of portable devices, which mean it can be taken away from the desk. We discuss the portable devices in the future lessons. The next device is called the SBC or the single board computer. SBC stands for single board computer. These computers are used in education, embedded computing or physical computing projects. The examples of those computers are Raspberry Pi, Beagle Board, Panda Board, MK802, etc. Now let's talk about the mobile phone and cameras. First of all, let's talk about the SIM cards. What is a SIM card? SIM stands for Subscriber Identity Module. Mobile phones use SIM card to connect to a mobile network. And a SIM card is used to identify the subscriber to a mobile phone network. Next type of the mobile phone is called the Specialist Phones. Some phones have specialist features to provide users with functions that meet the particular user's need. Some phones have an emergency button that is linked to a list of emergency contacts. When that button is pressed, the, the phone will call each person on the list until someone answers. Next, we have the smartphones. The smartphones are the small computers with Wi-Fi mobile phone connectivity. A smartphone allows users to make calls and use internet, install apps and play games. Here are the features of the smartphone. For example, we can install the apps, we can use it as a game console and they have the separate and advanced operating system. Next device is called the tablet. The tablet devices are bigger than smartphones but have the similar features. A tablet device has a touch screen, apps and Wi-Fi connectivity to provide access to the internet. Some tablets contain SIM card slots for the internet access when there is no wire. Now let's talk about the cameras and camcorders. Uh, these devices use light sensors to capture images formed by the light passing through the device lens. Cameras are used to capture still images while the camcorder used to capture the moving images. Most digital cameras nowadays film moving images and most co camcorders can photograph the still images. Next, let's talk about the image quality. What is image quality? A good lens allows light to travel through it without producing any defects. We can determine the quality of an image on those three factors like quality of lens, quality of image processor, and the quality of the uh, sensor resolution. These are the three factors. Based on those three factors, we can determine the quality of an image. Let's talk one by one. 
it allows the user to choose how much light can travel through it which affect the final image and a good image processor can compensate for the poor lighting conditions the sensor resolution of a camera is expressed as number of pixels that can be captured now let's talk about the pixels what is the pixel digital images are made up of small dots called pixels better quality sensor can capture more detail and produce images with a greater number of pixels some cameras use sensors each dedicated to a different color or wavelength of light now let's talk about the home entertainment system first device that we use in a home is television or tv televisions display still and moving images on screen quality of the image is set by the number of pixels that are used to display the image referred as screen resolution high definition television screen contain a large number of pixels high definition or hd television screen contain a large number of pixels which means that they have a higher resolution than standard definition televisions now let's talk about the resolution what is the resolution the resolution of a television in pixel is stated as horizontal pixels were multiplied by vertical pixels we can multiply the horizontal and the vertical pixel to calculate the resolution of a screen uh, manufacturer do not specify the number of horizontal pixel instead they only refer the vertical pixels you have usually seen that the screen with the number 720 or 1080p ultra high definition UHD TV screens are sometimes called 4K or 8K because they have a horizontal resolution of 4000 or 8000 pixels. Next device is called the sound system. Sound system can produce loud rich sound using high quality speakers and amplifiers. Sound system can play music from CDs or from the local storage. Uh, usually be connected to a personal device for example mobile phone media player tablet using wired like a usb or wirelessly via bluetooth they can be connected to a local network via wi-fi to play the music stored on connected devices some sound system can connect to the internet to play the music stored online next one is the personal video recorder personal video recorder or PVR a personal video recorder is a device that record broadcast content so that it can be watched at later date now let's talk about the blu-ray and the dvd players keep in mind now we are talking about the players not the disc blu-ray and dvd players connect to television to play films and other content stored on dvd or blu-ray disc Ray players can usually play DVD disc but DVD players will not play the Blu-ray discs. Blu-ray discs can store HD movies which have higher quality pictures and sound. Newer 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray players can play 4K content on 4K televisions. Now let's talk about the game consoles. What is a game console? A game consoles are designed to enable users to play video game on television screens. And games are provided on disk or as downloaded from the internet. They use controller which are often wireless to control the character, vehicle or objects in the game. Some games use motion sensors to allow players to control the game with gestures and body movement. Other games use virtual reality controller and headset to immerse the player in the realistic gaming experience. 